Today, it is a long overdue Tiki Technical Tuesday. What have we been up to? Well, I've been doing lots and lots of studio modifications, getting ready for a giant new studio tool. Now, before we get to that though, I realize we have never actually done a proper studio tour. So let's check out Van Tiki Studio. Van Tiki Studio is located just outside of Eugene, Oregon, and we designed it to look like a ranger station on the slopes of Mount Van Tiki. So I've been doing ceramics for many years in a Hawaii studio, uh, and it was a small space. It was really like an enclosed patio uh, that served as a laundry room, um, and I also managed to stuff a ceramic studio into it as well. But it was a challenge. It was a challenging, tiny little space. I think that I had about 10 feet by maybe 12 feet to work inside of. Um, so when we moved to Oregon four years ago, we knew we were gonna do ceramics full time and I would need a dedicated space to work out of. Uh, so we had the amazing and fun challenge of designing a studio to work in. The main studio sits on a 20 foot by 40 foot slab and it's split into four main rooms. The first being the main studio room where we do the majority of our work. That is followed by the kiln room, the glazing room and the shipping room. Above the glaze room and the shipping room, we have a storage loft and to the left is the garage space. So that's the plan. Let's do a quick run through the actual studio. Hold on to your hats and glasses. We're about to go on a whirlwind tour of Van Tiki Studio. I will try to point out all the essential tools and equipment as we go through. We begin here in the main studio room. We start here with our TV set essential, a kneeling oven for the plastics, and our tool tray that I keep all of the sculpting tools in. Moving on down, we have our two work tables. I designed these specifically for the studio. They're on wheels so we can move them around. I love them. Uh, they're a great height for both standing up and sitting. Uh, they have these lights over them because we're in Oregon and it's very dark here, so we need as much light as we can get. Table paper rolls on the bottom to keep things clean. And on the top, I've got this cutting board top, which is fantastic for clay and keeps the table tops nice and tidy. Then we have the slip tank. You are very familiar with this from past Tiki Technical Tuesday episodes. Above, I've got some Ikea cabinets that I keep all of my reference books in, mold making supplies. And over here we have, oh my God, a big pile of studio materials, essentials hanging on the wall there. Moving on to the studio sink, we have all our scrubbing, cleaning, and polishing supplies all stacked up. Underneath, we have a plaster trap to keep all clay particles and plaster out of the sewage. Then I have a wear cart. This is one of two wear carts. This one is for storing all of our greenware in the main studio. And then lastly, we have more studio supplies here on the rack. Whew. Next up, the kiln room. This small insulated chamber on the corner of the studio building is lined completely with a fireproof fiber cement paneling. We've got three LNL kilns. Two here are the Easy Fire kilns with a digital controller. And we also have a small doll kiln that's also got the digital controller. They are all connected to a venting system, which is essential for a kiln running uh, to fire correctly. And that venting system is run by this cool on off switch that I put in a few weeks ago. Next up, we have a very, very messy glazing room. Inside of this compact room, we've got yet another wear cart. This wear cart usually has things all stacked up ready to glaze, but right now it's mostly holding our Fireball Island project. Then we have a Laguna spray booth. I absolutely love the spray booth. It has been a tank. I modified it to hold extra light because it was dark to work inside of. Glazes and underglazes, I've got to work on this storage. It's a mess. Above the spray booth, we have got a blower that is sucking all of the air to the outside, and this hose is connected to the compressor that lives in the loft. I control it here with the switch for the compressor and a switch for the fan. Right next to the main room is the shipping room, which is chaotic, so we're not going to dwell on it. And then up these ship ladder stairs, we have got the storage loft. Also a mess, so also we're not going to be showing you that. Whoa, okay. That was a lot to take in. I realize you might have questions about some of the stuff that we just shot through. If you do, Put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them if you've got specific questions about equipment or why I put things where I put them. The studio is a work in progress. It's evolving. It's evolved. I mean, it's 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 a relatively new studio. We've only been here about three years, but we change it all the time uh, to make it efficient, clean, and safe. Uh, but yeah, any questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Back to the video. 
So that covers the ceramics portion of the studio, but what about this new tool that I was talking about at the start of today's episode? Well, that new tool is a laser cutter. Now I know, I know, we already have a laser cutter. We have a Glowforge, we've had a Glowforge for a year, and we've loved it. We loved it so much, in fact, that we decided it was time to upgrade to a larger, more powerful laser. Now that larger and more powerful laser is gonna need more space, and that brings us to the other half of the studio. The new laser is big, and it required us to completely rethink the garage space. So I made these paper models. I've got the laser itself. I've got the vent system it requires. I also made paper scale models of all the other stuff we use here. We have a Husky cabinet that I keep all of the laser supplies in. I've got a vacuum, which we use to clean the whole space. In addition, I have got toolboxes. I have got a workbench. I've got a table saw, and I've got a chop saw. So we've got all these tools, but the main challenge is we also have got to cram a car in here. We don't keep the car in the garage that often, but in the middle of the winter, it is nice to be able to park your car inside. So to put it lightly, there was lots of prep work. That's what I've been up to, and that's why there hasn't been a Tiki Technical Tuesday. We had new wiring, dedicated circuits for the laser and for the blower, which I had to run outside since, you know, we never planned on putting a big laser into the garage. Uh, I have a dedicated cutoff switch here for the blower, and it's a beautiful red so that we don't confuse it with the garage light switch. The blower itself is this two horsepower industrial blower. It is super loud and that required a quiet box so that we could actually work in the studio with the blower running. Now there is a ton of conflicting information online about how the best quiet box construction should be done. So I kind of picked and choose what I thought would work and built this box. I used a thick MDF and some leftover sound insulating foam I had from house construction. Uh, fortunately, the box that some of the laser components came in had this eggshell foam in it. So I was able to recycle that for the inside of the quiet box. Uh, that big silver thing you see on top is a muffler to quiet the exit air that comes out of the blower. And um, this really looks fast to watch, but this was uh, a solid three days of measuring and cutting and, and uh, fidgeting to get this all done. So it's been weeks of work, but we finally got proper power for the laser and we have got the ventilation system all ready to go. And look, the garage is now cleaned up and ready to be a fabrication space. All that we need is our fancy new laser to arrive. And here it is. We got a Trotec Speedy 360 laser, and it is massive. It is by far the largest tool I have ever purchased as a artist, as a professional, as a person, and it's extremely scary and exciting. You can see by its size why we had to really carefully plan ahead and get this space ready. And thank God they designed the crate with these fancy little ramps that lets us push the thing off of the base because it weighs like 550 pounds. As soon as we got the laser out of the crate, we connected all of the proper vents. There are two exhaust vents from this laser. We Those go into the quiet box and check it out. The quiet box makes a handy desktop for Denise to work on while she is operating the laser. Look at this, it fits. I'm so relieved. So why did we get the Trotec 360 and why are we not using the Glowforge anymore? Well, the Glowforge was a fantastic entry level laser, but we decided it was time to move up. The Trotec laser is much larger. The Glowforge had a 19 inch by 11 inch bed. This has a 32 inch by 20 bed, and it is a 80 watt laser as opposed to Glowforge's 40 watts, which means it is fast, ridiculously fast. All of these donuts, which we have to cut for our library of libations, uh, can be done in less than a quarter of the time that the Glowforge took. And we don't have to mask them. Whoa, did I just mention the library of libations? I did, and as you may recall, in October we released a teaser and then nothing really happened. We had all the files designed and yet the Glowforge was really struggling getting consistent cuts in the bamboo veneer that we had picked for the frame. Now fortunately, the new laser has no issues whatsoever with the wood and it also goes like butter. Look at the size of the bed that we are able to cut. It's fantastic. So, that being said, 
I think it's finally time to let you all see this zombie. What do you think? I am so proud of the design. We went through tons of iterations and the end result, well, I couldn't be happier. The moon glows in the dark. And this is exciting. I want you to know that they are on the store right now. The first 30 zombies are live now. Now, if you miss out, if you go back to the store and they're all gone, don't panic. As you can see, the new laser is very quick and we are making them as quickly as possible. Just like the previous Editions in the Library of Libations, there will be an addition of 200 zombies made. So as we produce them, we will be restocking the store. Follow Miss Van Tiki for updates. Um, yeah, we're super happy with it. Hope you are too. So there you have it. A quick tour of the Van Tiki studio and a peek at this new fabrication area that you haven't seen much of before. Now, it is still very much a work in progress and I am extremely excited about the things we have planned to build here in this space. We are still, of course, going to do ceramics, uh, but it's it's great to just play in different medias. Um, anyway, thanks for tagging along on another Tiki Technical Tuesday, and I will see you next episode.